Hello and welcome to the Garage Series for Office 365. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Greg Stemp. So Greg, last week we had a great primer on what PowerShell is and how you can use it to manage Office 365 and really do some great customization and bulk task automation. And, and that was cool, but also we had Jeremy racing the space shuttle trying to create and license 150 users before the space shuttle could reach orbit. But the space shuttle actually did something a bit more impressive in reaching space, but today we're going to go a bit deeper and look at the three most common scenarios where you'd actually use PowerShell against a live Office 365 tenant. Can't but wait. before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. This PowerShell module is used to manage Office 365 user provisioning, reporting, and licensing. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So on today's show, we really want to show three practical areas where we'd use PowerShell in order to manage Office 365. The first one being automating bulk procedures. The second one, we're going to look at querying the service for custom reports. And the third one, we want to output that query into a file so we can use that for other decisions or other things we want to do against mm -hmm. the service. So Greg, I know you've got a great demo to show us. Why don't you show how we can do all three of these things in one scenario? So what we've got is we've got this scenario where in, in our domain we have project managers. Okay? And some of them work remotely, meaning they either work out of their home or they work on a customer site. You know, okay. The point is they're not in our building. Yep. Okay? And what we want to do is we want to take all those project managers and we want to give them project online. Okay? So we need to license them for that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now that's a very simple thing, or at least it sounds simple. But here, here's the problem we run into with the UI if we try to do that. And I'll just show this real quickly. I'm in the UI and I've created a custom view and I can get a list of all of my project managers. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying, okay, so which one of these work remotely? Well, the truth is I don't have any idea. And the reason is the, the UI doesn't let you find that information. You can't uh, display it. You can't filter on it. All you can do is bring up the project managers and then start clicking on each user account one by one to figure out who's remote and who isn't. And we know about half of our project managers are remote, so it'd be like flipping a coin to see who's got remote exactly. and setting and who Yeah, and, and you know, granted, this is a demo, so we have eight. And, you know, how long is it going to take to do eight? Well, not that long, but what if we had 80? Or what if we had 800? Right. right. So that's the point. So the deal is, you know, what, what does PowerShell do that's better than that? And that's what we're going to find out here. Okay. Now, first of all, I, I have to admit, we're, we're going to cheat here. And I've got all the commands already written out uh, so that people do not have to watch me type, type. which is it's like it's sitting in the while. dentist's office listening to the drill. Watching it's very pain painful. Yeah. Yes. Now, what I've done here is, is I ran a command to see how many people are currently licensed for projects. Okay. And the only reason I did that is we don't want people thinking this is some sort of a trick and they already license them in advance. We're actually doing this demo live on real Office 365. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see nobody came back. That means nobody is currently licensed. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to run another little command here. And this, by the way, if you're scoring at home, this is actually number two of Jeremy's three points. We're not going exactly in order, but that's to be expected with me. Okay. What we're doing here is we're looking for the project managers who work remotely. And so you see, right, we get the users where their title is project manager. That's pretty straightforward. And then we're saying where their office either equals remote, meaning they work at home, or their office is equal to on site, which means they work at a customer site. And this mm -hmm. is the, the place where the UI doesn't help us much is when we get to this point. Right. So if we run this command, we get back four users. And if you're thinking, well, hey, you got back eight in the UI, yes, this, that's exactly the point. The UI couldn't distinguish between them, whereas PowerShell can. Right. Okay, so there we go. Step one, or step two is done. I keep wanting to get technical. Okay, now what we're going to do is we, we needed to save all this information to a file. And the reason is, in, in our domain, we, we can't just hand out licenses. We have to hand it over uh, the list to the procurement people, right. and they approve the list, and et cetera, et cetera. And they might want to edit the list or whatever. Exactly, right. Okay. So what we've got here is a command that the first half of this command is exactly what we just ran. It goes out and gets our project managers who work remotely. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this little select object thing. Is We're, we're, we're pulling just their user principal name and their display name simply because our procurement people don't need to see a list of 
fields this big for every user. Right, they just need right, to know right. who the users are. And then we use this export CSV, CSV short for comma separated values file, command it, and that's going to send uh, all of these remote people to a little text file. So we run that and get used to this in PowerShell. You don't usually get a big congratulations, you've successfully saved your text right. file. Uh, usually no nothing happens. News, yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, but fortunately, you know, that's that's very easy to check. So we're we're just gonna open up Notepad using the path to that file we just created. And ta-da, see there? Yes. This is what we would hand to our procurement people. And right. maybe our procurement people say, you know, Molly down here, she, she actually turned in her two weeks notice. She's leaving. Okay. Okay, so, so that's fine, right? They or us, somebody can just, like you said, add, subtract, do whatever. So we get right. rid of Molly. Molly is gone. Save this file. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We've we're got one last item stuff. on our checklist. We've already, we've already gotten a granular report, custom query. We've already outputted that to a file. Now we want to do a bulk task against that list. It, you stole my thunder. I was going to tell everybody <laughs> that, but that's okay. That's all right. I mean, you, this is your show, so that's fine. Oops. You can see not only is it painful to watch me type, but it can be painful to watch me copy and paste sometimes, too. Okay, so what we've got here is a command. Remember, we used export CSV to write our CSV file. Mm -hmm. Now we're using import CSV to import right. that file. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all those names out of the file. We're going to hand those names over to the set msol user license commandlet. And what's it going to do? It's going to give everybody a license to project online. Okay. okay. Or so we hope anyway. I guess we'll find out here. So we run this. And again, nothing happens. As long as you don't see red, you're pretty much good to go. In general, yes. In general, yeah. right. But, you know, we can check this easily enough. And so what we're going to do here is, you remember at the very start, we ran the command to see who was licensed for project, and it came back blank because nobody was. Mm -hmm. So now in theory, and i got to tell you, this is almost as good as your space shuttle race here. The tension is mounting. So yeah, let, let's take a look and see who now is licensed for project. And there's the three names, which just happen to be the three names that were in our CSV file. Okay? Very cool. Again, could you do this in the UI? Sure, it would take a long time, but you could do it, right? Whereas, you know, these commandlets probably took me a minute to write all of them. Very, very, very simple stuff. Now I know even beyond that, and we've checked off our list, but there's more functionality you can expose through PowerShell. Some things that we might have some reporting inside the UI, but not all of the details. Do you have a few examples for that? You know, I just happen to have an example of that. Uh, if we take a look first of, uh, in the admin center in Office 365, one of the reports that you can find there is called active and inactive mailboxes. And inactive mailboxes is, is a useful thing because it tells you how many mailboxes aren't being used? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, you see I'm not a particularly good administrator, and I've got 37 mailboxes that nobody has touched. And that could be a lot of lost, 90 days. lost money that you're paying for licenses where they're not even using the service. Exactly. I mean, th this could be people who have quit the company. Uh, on the other hand, it could be a, a a mailbox for a conference room, in which case you don't have to license them anyway. Right. So who cares? The problem is I don't know based on this. Mm -hmm. I only know that I've got issues or potential issues. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to uh, PowerShell window for my domain and we're going to run something called the stale mailbox detail report. Okay. And what that will do is show us exactly which mailboxes are stale. So I've cheated here. I've ran this command before and uh, had it in my history so I just pulled it back up. Right. Okay. And we're going to look at it and we're just going to pull out the username. Again, this brings back a whole bunch of information. The username is equal to your alias, your mailbox alias. So mm -hmm. we run this command and these are the mailboxes that haven't been accessed. So you see, you know, we do have a conference room or two, that's fine, but we also have a whole bunch of users. Why aren't these people using their mailbox? I don't know, but that's our next step. But you wouldn't be able to get to this information through the UI alone. Right, now the great thing is if I wanted to, I could output all of those names into a CSV file, and if I wanted to deprovision those accounts, I could use that, import that CSV, and then get rid of those accounts if I so choose. Sure, you, you could do anything you wanted to. I mean, it's, sky's the limit here. Awesome, so we saw basically automating bulk tasks. We saw uh, creating reports, custom views of the detail in the tenant. We've also seen how you, can, uh, how you can output those to a file, and we've seen some great views that you can't even access at all through the UI. Yeah, 
Yeah. And there's more. You there's know, but, obviously uh, a lot more. So all this, uh, all this is in PowerShell. And before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at today's trivia. This PowerShell module is used to manage Office 365 user provisioning, reporting, and licensing. So of course the answer was B, use the Azure AD module to configure all of those settings in Office 365. So hopefully this helps you get started with PowerShell and Office 365. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, there are things that are PowerShell only. They're not exposed in the UI at all. You want to manage them, you have to use PowerShell. One of the examples we've shown on a previous show is how to configure Office 365 message encryption. That's exclusively a set of PowerShell commands. Exactly. So all of this we're going to link to on today's blog, all the great documentation for PowerShell and much more. You can follow us at Microsoft.com slash garage, also on Twitter, at Office Garage. Thank you everybody for watching and goodbye for now. Thank you.